Brian here with Classic G Body Garage. And this here is my 1978 Cutlass Supreme Rome. Now, this is the car that I got for free. Yes, I did say free. One of my YouTube subscribers actually gave me their G Body. And this car was nearly in the scrap yard. Now, if you wanna hear about the story on that one, I do have a video that I will post in the description below. Go ahead and check that out and you can find out the entire story on how I acquired this car. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go ahead, pop the hood, check out things underneath there, find out what the issues are behind this car because I did mention in the prior video the issues that we do have. It does overheat, it runs a little iffy, it runs good for the most part, but the overheating issue is the big concern on this car. So, let me go ahead, hop back in here, fire it up, and back in the garage. We'll get the hood open and see how we look underneath there. All right, let me go ahead and grab the camera and I'll show you guys what we have going on underneath the hood here. So here is the massively powerful Oldsmobile 260, which found its way into many 78 to 80 cutlasses. And I'm gonna go over three things in this video. Uh, for starters, it does have an overheating issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the radiator out and find out what we have going on there. Secondly, I'm gonna go ahead and change out the thermostat. Now the reason I'm gonna do that is because we're gonna have the cooling system already opened up. The third thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of the vacuum lines. Now this car being nearly 40 years old, it has a lot of original parts underneath here. So one of the things that happens to the vacuum lines over time is they actually harden up and start to get brittle and break and they have uh, they end up getting cracks in them and cause vacuum leaks and cause a lean condition which causes the engine to run uh, rough. It uh, doesn't run very smoothly so I'm going to go ahead and go through all of that. Let me grab some tools. I'll show you guys exactly what you need to go ahead and start pulling this radiator out of here. All right, I have the tools all laid out here that we need for this particular job. The most important tool, besides yourself, is a flare wrench. Now we're gonna use a half inch flare wrench to remove the transmission lines that thread into the side of the radiator. Now why is the reason, what's the reason why we need a flare wrench? Well, this wrench is specific to lines. It's also called a line wrench. And a line wrench has these C channels or the C uh, fittings here on the end of it. And what that does is it wraps tightly around the fitting of the line. If you have a standard wrench, that's most likely gonna uh, strip out that fitting on the line. So make sure you have yourself a flare wrench. Very, very important in this job. And of course, if your G-Body is a manual trans, you don't have to worry about that. And of course we have the coolant, the thermostat, and gasket for the thermostat housing. Now, I went ahead and got a 160 degree thermostat. Now the reason why I did that versus the 195 that the manufacturer calls for is because I drive these cars in the summer and I felt that a 195 was a little bit too hot uh, especially for summer driving, so I went ahead and got the 160. Now, of course, we're gonna be swapping the radiator out, and this here is a brass style radiator versus the aluminum that's in there, and I pulled that from one of my parts cars. So the first thing we would do is go ahead and drain the cooling system, and that would be done by opening up the petcock found underneath the tank on the radiator underneath the hose there. So you grab your drain pan, open up that valve there, and let the coolant drain out. Well, since this system does not have any coolant in it, I'm gonna move on to the next step, and that would be removing the top plate here on top of the radiator. And that's gonna be removed by using my 10 millimeter socket, removing a series of bolts. Now, depending upon your engine configuration in your G-Body, the top plate here can look a little bit different. This one here is a metal plate attached to a plastic fan shroud. Now, some cars use a complete plastic top fan shroud, so you could have bolts here on the top, and then, and then the fan shroud is splits in half. So let me go ahead and grab my socket and start removing this top plate here. All right, as you can see, I have the radiator pull out of it, and it actually looks like it has a brand new fan clutch on it, so that's pretty nice. So I have it sitting out here on the driveway, and I have it sitting next to an original radiator. The differences are, is the original replacement is a, uh, a brass radiator. It has brass tanks, 
uh, on either side. So it is all metal, so to speak. And the aftermarket replacement radiator is an aluminum style radiator. It has an aluminum core, aluminum fins. However, it has plastic tanks. Now this is very similar, if not identical, to what most new modern cars have with the aluminum and plastic tank combo versus the old traditional brass tank style. And this is the issue with it right here. So the drain plug is so large that I think it interfered with the fan shroud. So once they put the radiator in the car, it may have somewhat knocked it loose and maybe uh, just vibration going down the road. The uh, fan shroud started uh, working, working on this drain here and working it loose. And I can't even get it screwed back into place and it's locked back into place. So I'm not sure what's going on with that drain. So what I'm gonna do is replace it with this factory original style radiator. And it will, uh, to me, it'll be a, a better peace of mind uh, knowing that everything is tight and secure and there isn't a risk of, of all of the coolant draining back out of it. So let's get it into the car. All right, the radiator is all back in. The fan shroud is bolted up to the top plate here and everything is back in place. The tranny lines are snug, but the cooling system is still empty. That's because I'm gonna go ahead now and replace the thermostat. So the thermostat is located inside of the water neck here and uh, the thermostat is held down by two half inch bolts on either side right here. All right, so as you can see, I have the thermostat pulled out and it was replaced relatively recently, but you know, since I do wanna go ahead and switch out the temperature rating on the thermostat, so yeah, I wanna go ahead and, and get the new one in place. Now before I do that, I'm gonna to wanna to grab a razor blade and clean up this area right here. Make sure it's all smooth and free of any old gasket debris. I'm also gonna do the same thing on the water neck itself, maybe a little bit of sandpaper as well. I'm also gonna use uh, on the bolt, on the threads of the bolts, some anti-seize since those bolts go into aluminum and I don't want to ever have an issue down the road or the next owner of this car have an issue down the road with bolts breaking off in the manifold. All right, I have the old thermostat pulled out and I have it sitting here on the bench next to the new one. Now I wanna show you guys how you can tell what your thermostat is rated at. It's printed, or I should say it's stamped on the bottom. So grab your thermostat, flip it upside down, and here you can see on the copper portion of the thermostat. The old one here says 195, that's 195 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the left here, this is the new one, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you ever question yourself on what your thermostat is rated at, just flip it over and it's stamped there on the bottom. All right, I have the surface all cleaned up here on the intake manifold as well as on the water neck. And I also went ahead and put a new piece of heater hose here on the bypass tube. Put a little bit of oil down here on the rubber so once I put this all together, this piece slides into the rubber nice and easily. So what I'm gonna do now is drop the new thermostat into place. Fits right there in the little cutout. Now this gasket here is actually a pretty uh, beefy gasket and it also has an adhesive on the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this off of here. So let me go ahead and stick, line up the holes here and stick it down. All right, now let's go ahead and put the water neck on. All right, everything is snug down. Now it's time to put the hose back on. And you don't wanna over tighten these clamps. You don't wanna have them so tight that the, that the rubber is actually squeezing through these, these ribs right here, these slots because the clamp can actually cut the rubber itself. So definitely make sure you do not over tighten these clamps. Now let's get some coolant in it. All right, we got everything all buttoned up. A nice mixture of coolant and water is in the system. And of course we have it fired up and running nice here. And it seems like the system is building pressure and it is nice and hot there on the top. So looking good, no leaks so far, but we'll let it run here for a little while and let it cool down and see if we have any leaks and go ahead and top off the coolant. And then next, I'm gonna go ahead and start tackling this mess 
of vacuum lines. Doesn't that look like a lot of fun there? All right, guys, well, it looks like I have the cooling system all straightened out on this car. Hopefully you guys found that valuable in regards to replacing your radiator and your thermostat. You know, some of that stuff is fairly basic, but for those of you who have never done that before, I'm hoping that this video helps you out. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know if it did. Oh, and I also have to sort through these vacuum lines, uh, which I'm not really gonna show you guys just because it's kind of uh, boring, mundane work. Uh, just a, a tip in regards to that. Uh, make sure you know you don't pull all the vacuum lines off at the same time because then you're you know not sure how it all goes back together. Now there is a sticker on the fan shroud that does tell you how things go back together, but if you replace the lines one by one, you're not going to run into that issue. So that is it for this video, guys. Like I said, make sure you leave a comment below and let me know uh, if this video helped you out. Also, make sure, like I said, to Follow Classic G-Body Garage on Facebook and Instagram. I'm always posting on there. Well, until the next Classic G-Body Garage video, make sure you keep those G-Bodies rolling. <laughs>